Hello everybody and welcome to episode 40 of Bangin' and Bangin' with Gang Grout and the lovely Anna Diaz. You know, when I hear 40, it makes me think of good old easy rest in peace. Sippin' on the 40. No, you know, yeah. You sang it earlier. I did sing it, it earlier. Better so far, earlier. It sounded better earlier because I had the beat playing. I need to play it again. <laughs> Sippin' on the 40. I, I don't know if that was like Easy's uh, attempt at blues a little bit with the raps, but... I enjoyed it. Anything Easy E, I was down with it. No, Raymond, it's not because I spent too much time in California. I was listening to Easy E before I ever went to California. I was a little kid listening to Easy. What were you doing? No. You waiting for this Lamar Kendrick guy or something? What did you listen to? This auto tune stuff? Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne? Nah. Yeah. Master P, maybe? No, we already had these conversations. But <laughs> episode 40. <laughs> uh, how are you, Anna? What's going on? I'm all right. Episode, um, episode 4 right? Yeah. Episode 4 Episode 40. Yeah. All right, so um, I, I guess we could start with a recap of my weekend. There was no weekend. I did not wrestle this weekend. I was supposed to be in Dubai, and uh, they moved the dates. Supposedly, they moved to May now. It was May to April. or, or was like March to April. Now it's May. So I'm looking at a May thing there. If it's still going on, I don't know. You know, wrestling's a funny world, and it's funny business. And a lot of weird things go on, you know, a lot of ups and downs and round and round. So I'm not sure what's going to go on there. So I had the weekend off. And uh, How well, you, often do you get the weekend off? Hardly never. never. <laughs> Usually it's wrestling, that. some type of something to do with wrestling seven days a week. Whether like it's uh, like my current schedule would be like CCW. I, I, yeah. I, I would be down there training at the Pompano facility Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then I'm on the road Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, um yeah, but yeah, I've been having a lot of weird cancellations. So like, I, you know, it's a good thing I started with MLW because I was supposed to do a signing in Texas at WrestleCon at WrestleMania in Dallas. And these ass, I shouldn't say, well, the buttheads. These buttheads, I go, hey, I gotta get my return flight. I'm coming in Thursday for MLW to do that show, and then the Friday Azteca show, Aztec show, and then uh, you know, I was supposed to sign Friday and Saturday. They're like, oh well. Uh, my partner ran off and my, something about my dad being sick. Blah, blah, blah. Well, Excuse it's blah, blah, blah. If your dad's sick, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry and I feel bad and I want to send well wishes and positive vibes. But, you know, I shouldn't have to call you and say, where's my return flight? And then you give me that information. You just should tell me out the gate. So now on, I'm not going to say this guy's name. One, I can't even think of it. Jer- Jeremy Rami or something. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, I think that's it. I don't even know. Um but I, now I'm going to have to take deposits from people. I was always one of those wrestlers that never take deposits because I don't like to take deposits because I'm not going to give you money back. If something goes wrong, <laughs> I'm not going to give it back. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. If I get money, I, I'm, not, I'm not physically able to give it back. But now right? you understand no. like why some wrestlers do take deposits when they take dates. I, I don't like to do it because I just really, I honestly... Hard for me to give the money back once I get it. I don't know. It's just, it's just my nature. It's a squirping and a frog. You give me money, you're not getting it back. So I don't take deposits. But when it's a big event like that, like WrestleCon, and it's a two-day thing, and it's that type of money and stuff, you're going to have to give a half-day deposit. And you can thank that gentleman for that. But I really, really don't like to take the deposits at all. Um, I usually won't. I have people, <laughs> I like, like I'm a little nervous. I'm, next weekend, um, this weekend I'm in Nashville for CCW uh, doing that show. But then the week after, I'm in Orlando for Frank Goodman, and um, and now he's he's the kind of guy. Uh, was what, what is this company called? Uh, what's Frank's company? Uh, I can't. I can't. A uh, USA Pro, I think USA Pro. Uh, yeah. Is in Orlando, right? So he he just sent me my. I should have never gave him my PayPal information because he sent me my pay already, and I'm like, ah. So here now I'm looking at things. Go, man! I took this money. And then I'm looking at gas prices, you know, <laughs> like I'm driving a, I'm driving a, a Chevy Silverado and I'm thinking I got to drive to Orlando back. Gas is like, you know, it's not quite $5 a gallon, but it probably will be by that time in two weeks yeah. because of the, um, whatever reasons you can blame the Russians invading Ukraine or you can blame uh, Biden shutting the pipeline down. Um, no, I don't know. I'm just saying, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know why, but whatever reasons, Gas is high as hell, so now it makes it impossible. Um, that that it makes it impossible for me to want to do local shots in Florida within four or five hours because I don't want to put the gas out because it starts cutting into your thing. Where I could take a, I live five minutes from the Fort Lauderdale Airport. I'll take a five minute Uber, mm-hmm. ten bucks to the Uber, ten bucks back. You got twenty dollars invested, and if you if you if you're frugal enough, you'll 
you'll drink water through the airport, this and that. You get there, you do thing, and, and you make money. And, and not that I didn't make bad money. I make, you know, I, I'm very grateful for the money I make wrestling. But when you start clipping 150 away and 200 towards gas and stuff and tolls, it's yeah. not going to make it worth it. So now I might have to go, oh, Frankie Goodman, I might have to send you your money back. So it's sitting in my PayPal. All I got to do is resend it because I didn't look at it. Like It's going to send it right back to him. Oh, you didn't but I'm not going to cancel on it, but, but I can't, like... The money's not bad, but I just can't. I can't. In my head, I still do business. I still make money. I still make whatever. But but mm-hmm. in my head, I almost rather, almost rather just be home than to deal with all that. But it's, yeah. but maybe that's the old age, the back, the knee, and everything else going. It's not that I don't still love wrestling. You know I'm making a show. You know that, right? Yeah. You of know course. I'm gonna go. You, you know I'm do. gonna wrestle. I'm just talking shit out loud. <laughs> that's what you know. Because, but um, yeah. So Dubai is canceled. So I had the weekend off. Well, you knew that because we went down. Uh, we took a ride down Saturday morning to uh, Key West. Yeah, Gilbert's. Mm-hmm. Well, not Key West, Upper Keys, uh, uh, yeah. just above Key Largo, to Gilbert's Resort where your dad and your uh, dad brother and played, brother, right? Yeah. So we watched a set and a half there, something like that. Mm-hmm. Set and a half, darted right back to uh, Hollywood, changed, and then uh, hit Pompano. Went up to North Pompano and seen Sammy Hagar, the Red Rocker, which was a great concert. Raymond, don't even Raymond won't know who Sammy Hagar is. So don't even. He doesn't know who he is. No, you know who Sammy Hagar is. Montrose, or you, um, you know who Van Halen is. Mm. I know his name, yeah. Van oh. Halen, yeah. Van Hagar, yeah. He was in, yeah. But that was a great concert. Uh, it was really good. Embarrassing. Yeah. Nah, it's all right. He doesn't know who easy he is either, so it's okay. He only knows people in his Kodak. Oh, Kodak's good. I know like Kodak. Yeah. What's up? Dear Field Pompano, Kodak. What's up? Uh, <laughs> 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 I grew up in Deerfield, man. So, you know. You know, uh uh was that other rapper you like uh uh was it Triple X Extension? Whatever was his name. Triple X Extension. X X X. Yeah, it's Triple X X X X. Right. Yeah, he got smoked right over there at Reva World. There, yeah. right there, man. I, I used to go over there to a sub shop every every day when I was a kid. I'd ride my bike a couple miles over to that sub shop from Deerfield up towards Pompano. Yeah, he he got a yeah. It's craziness down there. That's, a, that's a Third name. world. What's up, Deerfield? Deerfield Beach. <laughs> Love Deerfield. Go Bucks. But um, so it was a good weekend off. But um. Uh, really miss uh, miss going to Dubai. Uh, I was looking forward to that. Um, the uh, the first time I went to Dubai, oh gosh, I can't remember what year it was. It was after WWE, um, a, f- a few years after WWE. Like so, f- that was two thousand, like two thousand two, maybe. I'm not sure, but they have like a every year they have this thing called the shopping festival over there. It's like a month long shopping festival. Mm -hmm. So people come in from all over the world to go shopping. So what they did when I was there is I wrestled 30 straight days, but what they did was they built, it just took like this picture of somebody erecting four giant walls, just four giant walls in this field, right? Through a wrestling and put bleachers all around the wrestling ring. So four giant walls, no ceiling or nothing, it didn't rain. Um, and then you wrestled, like, then we had, like, uh, trailers for dressing rooms, but on, and on mm-hmm. the backside of where the entrance was for the ring. So you, we wrestled 30 straight days. We wrestled 30 nights in there. So that's it, 30 nights. Um, wow. It was amazing. The money was amazing. The city was amazing. The people treated us very good. I mean, they would tell you don't go walking off by yourself, you know, stay in a group and stuff like mm-hmm. that for whatever reasons. But, um, uh, Multiple reasons, <laughs> but Dubai was a great city, and 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 for the most part, great people, and it was a great time, and um, it was certainly great money. Um, I mean, you, you wrestled thirty straight days, and you, I mean, I'm not even gonna tell you what I made, but it was ridiculous. So, unfortunately, all that money disappeared. When uh, it's, it's another long story, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna go. On, I'm not gonna go on to Luna saying she had to go home for a week and then disappearing with everything. <laughs> Not showing back up because I went from Dubai. I did thirty straight days in Dubai, and then I went straight to England for All Star Wrestling, and did another almost three months there, two and a half months there before I ever came home. So I was out of the country for three and a half months, you know. So um, good times, good times. Mm-hmm. But uh, any money I had in the bank and any money that I made in Dubai, I didn't never seen again. <laughs> like good thing I was making my and I stayed that other two and a half months in England or whatever. So that money's the only money I had left to start my life over with. So. But, well, you had something to start with. I had something, and I had wrestling. 
Good old wrestling. Still have wrestling, I guess. Yeah. Not so much anymore, but and it's not canceled. It's just rescheduled. So hopefully you're saying they cancel me? What? No, no. <laughs> well, no. I don't usually use that word cancel around here. I get nervous when I hear cancel. Like, I always think I Dubai. popped up on a list or something like. <laughs> Dubai. I'm waiting for all the students at the school to cancel me yet. <laughs> really? Yeah. You think they'd do that to you? Well, I hit the one kid in the head. She cried. Well, she probably, <laughs> she probably deserved it. No, no. Yes and no. No, no. She's going to be really good. I think she's going to be real good. Which one? Uh, M- Melissa. She can hold her shit together. Oh, yeah. yeah. Melissa? Is that her name? Yeah. Melissa? Yeah. She yeah, some- she's in the military. She's still uh, serving our government. Thank you for her service and all. Yeah, but, of course. But I think she has... Uh, I left it with Judy. I left her over there with Judy for like three weeks, and it, she's still doing roll bumps. And I'm like, "What do you got?" So I go in there and spend ten minutes with her, and then I got her doing all this. And then you saw yesterday, I made it, that was the first time doing flip bumps. Like, so she got that within five minutes, but she yeah. started crying, and I, I don't get it. But I guess um, she has a couple things to but to to deal with, like she's going on in her head, I think, but. When she when she gets through that, Judy's making excuses for it. Judy's saying all oh, the rings banging reminds her of the bombs going off or something like. That. Well, the, no, it was. So not, I, I didn't notice she saw active it's, like it's Judy not, or anything. So like it's not the rings banging; it's the it's the roll itself. So any flips, she hasn't done flips in years. She said because. Well, then what the hell are you doing wrestling for? <laughs> I'm not saying wrestling's a flippy sport, but you got a four roll. A, yeah, a, a, no. A hip I mean, toss, a backdrop, she a, must, a suplex is yeah, all the same thing. She must really not know what she got into. Yeah, or... she knows. She's a fan. She's just it's just overwhelming because like yeah. she went from Judy to me all of a sudden because uh, my back was feeling better the last few days. Plus, I feel like we're not making progress with people, so I reevaluated and how I'm approaching everything and. I've got more hands back on like I used to be because uh, I can rely on Trevor to to keep the uh, more advanced busy mm-hmm. while I work with the beginners. So uh, yeah, and uh, you haven't been there as much, so I've had to get in there. So uh, they're a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's a hint for you to start showing back up a little bit. Well, it it is it is what gang girl that's the head trainer, right? Right, but I always need assistance from people that have helped, that have trained. You have assistance from people. Okay, so you're not valuable. I, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm something. Uh, I don't know how valuable I am. I, I feel you're valuable, but I don't think you feel you're valuable because you're thinking you just said that. Oh, I'm getting ground. I'm a trainer. So, well, nobody's as valuable as you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not going to get into it. All right, so so big news is out. AEW purchases Ring of Honor, right? So is that exciting times or or, or what? I, I don't know. Um, it's exciting in a sense maybe that some of the Ring of Honor guys maybe can come back to work. I don't know. They were all released out of their contracts except for a couple. Um, and then apparently a lot of the people that worked for AEW, some of the employees and whatnot, they were surprised by the announcement because I guess maybe the deal just closed and they literally tony khan came out there and announced it so caught a lot of people off guard but maybe he was super excited about this announcement so um uh if i was speculating where it's gonna go and this is just my opinion and my opinion only um i don't know <laughs> i really don't know um i what would make sense would maybe be you know um a developmental but man he already has AEW dark this and that does, does he if it's a developmental does he does he uh I don't know, man. Uh, does he b- bring back the Ring of Honor guys? Does he bring back the Briscoes? Does he bring back you know some of these people that were the the backbone of uh, of Ring of Honor? And uh, does he mix in AEW guys? Does is it a separate company? I think he did say it was going to be a separate company, maybe. And ran. I mean, I don't was know. Was AEW Dark considered a develop de- Eh, can't speak. Developmental, or is it just like a pre-show type of deal? No, no, they don't no, train no, no, no. They there. film, they film in Orlando or something. They, they yeah. tape. It's a whole other thing. So I think it was like their developmental type of thing. So yeah. now, if you got Ring of Honor, are they gonna run it as a developmental or are they gonna run it as a separate company? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I read somewhere that Tony Khan said he was gonna book for both. <laughs> He's gonna book both shows, which could be a lot, a lot on your plate. Uh, but I guess he feels he can handle a lot. I think I think he's just really, really rushing in, into things. I might would have held on to the announcement a little longer and at least let some of the employees know that hey, we've been purchased by AEW. This and that. I don't, you know, people don't 
a lot of people really don't like to be caught off guard, but I get being super excited and you want to announce something. Yeah. Um, so with, on that, with that being said, you got William Regal that came back and slapped a, slapped a <laughs> CM Punk and, um, well, no, not CM Punk. Was it, who was it? Uh, 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 Moxley and, uh, Brian Danielson, like he, he came out. I seen a clip. I didn't watch the show itself. I read and listened to the results and stuff like that. And I heard it was a hell of a show. Uh, the only low part in the show, and it's not fair to them, was probably the girls' match. Um, yeah, you got people killing themselves before them, people killing themselves after. I think um, who did they have before them? Was it was it uh, not Punk? What was it Punk? Did, who went before the girls? Whatever it was, it was like a really really hard spot to follow. Like so, uh, was it bad because? Of the match or just a hard spot to follow? Mm, I think it was a hard spot to follow. I didn't see the match, so I can't really comment and say anything about the match, good or bad. Uh, I'm just looking at how, if you read the card, like, I had results somewhere earlier, and let me see, uh, pull it up here. Uh, so, you know, cards build, and, and this card was so strong that it was really um tough spot for it. I wouldn't want to be in that spot. You'd have to cut your head off. Uh, like, mm -hmm. It's a good thing they finished with wrestling at the end. What we got here? Um, who did they follow? Um, yeah, they followed CM Punk and MJF in that dog collar match, which uh, which was... Uh, it, it, I didn't see it, but it, I saw pictures just saying the amount of blood and whatnot going on. And then, But, it, but the show started off with Jericho and Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston going over. So... Uh, that, that I heard, I didn't see it again. I didn't see it, but I heard they kicked the shit out of each other. <laughs> like, and they did some, they're just, just crazy brawling. And then you had, uh, the Wardlow guy, he, he won the, uh, the, the revolution ladder match, right? Where he, where, uh, he gave that gnarly power bomb to, uh, uh, oh gosh, I can't think of Ricky Starks, where Ricky Starks neck bit the ladder. That was crazy. Ooh, yeah, just I... seen clips of that. And then you had CM Punk with a dog collar match, which, Iconic dog collar match, Valentine Piper, all this, and MJF, and, and everything just good about that match I heard. I didn't see it, but everything I read and everything just tells me it was a good match. And then you got Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa. So you got the girls. Throw it in that mix of things. I, I, it's a tough spot because then, then right after him, you got Moxley and Brian, And then I, and then you got Adam Page and then and, 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 uh, Adam Page with uh, uh, Adam Cole, which... The only thing they could do was wrestle at the end, which was smart thing to do after all the blood and violence of that pay per view. So uh, I don't know what Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa did, but uh, I'm sure that was a tough, tough spot, especially you know for women. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I I would have rather jerked the curtain if I was them. I would have rather said, "Hey, let us go first. <laughs> Let's open the show. We'll do our thing, and then you can have some blood and." Guts after, you know, all the way up and then finish with a wrestling match. But probably would have um, been a better spot for that. But it sound, sounded, I didn't see it again. Yeah, I think so. But that's just my opinion. Um, sounded like an amazing pay per view. Uh, like everybody poured their, their heart and soul out into it. Um, yeah. So, uh, but, but that, that's the moxie and stuff. So Regal come out. And that was his. That was his debut. Smacked some sense into him. Basically, made him hug and make up. Hey, you guys are friends. Stop this. You know, <laughs> like, what's wrong with you guys? Tighten up, lads. And then, um, so he's there. So we're regal there now. Now that's another mind. A lot of experience, uh, especially with developmentals and developing young talent. Mm -hmm. Hell, half the stuff, all all the stuff you guys are doing in training now. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. All all, all the training. All those quarter rolls and rolls, they come from Regal. It's a lot of Regal influence in NXT, the, the, the quarter roll right, quarter roll left, the tiger rolls and all that. Because the big believer on um, safety and that's programming your, your, your brain to, to, to protect itself. If something goes wrong, you roll through it. You, you, you trip, you roll through it. Yeah. And it's just, it's just a programming mechanism to, to uh, in training. For your safety in the long run while you're wrestling matches. So a lot of the stuff that NXT did and everything was very regal influenced. So um, so if you're going to have a developmental company and, and, and you're going to restructure this and this and that, I, I think regal would be a great guy to bring in. He has the knowledge. He's got the experience. He has the patience. Uh He's had the ups, downs. He's had his demons and his all-arounds, you know. So And he's come through to the other side. So, I mean... 
I think he's a great a uh, asset to the company AEW, and I think they did good with, and they were smart to to bring him on board. Now, where they go with Ring of Honor, I don't know. I don't know if they just bought the video library, if they bought the time slots of TV. I don't, I don't even know how that works. I'm not, uh, I'm not an executive or a business end on that, or nor have I been in in the, in the wrestling industry. I mean, I've run production and the shows I've done, this and this and that, but nothing on the level like of Sinclair and and. Uh, TV, you know, all, uh, all these people, uh, WWE, the, the stuff that goes into it, the time slots and all, all these uh, things that people overlook in wrestling. So uh, there's a lot more to it, um, I guess, because uh, he kind of rushed the announcement out there. Uh, but I guess time will tell what's going to happen and what goes down and things will get explained and broke down. And Hell, I don't even know what he, he paid for a company. <laughs> <laughs> there was the company shut the, it shut down it was gonna be restructured and then they sold I think you would have bought it when it was like at the prime but maybe maybe they didn't want to sell it at the time who knows I heard WWE was trying to get it I don't know what happened there if they just didn't want it or, or the deal wasn't right I don't know so exciting times though um ring, uh, if anybody can do anything with ring of honor uh keep it traditional and keep it ring of honor maybe not developmental it would be tony Khan because he's a giant fan pretty much AEW is a giant ring of honor <laughs> like kind the of, guys have yeah. brung up from there and everything so so he's truly a fan of it and so I mean, wwe probably would have just bought the cat uh, the catalog you know all the videos and stuff and probably mm -hmm. threw away the shit the people that weren't there <laughs> they would have just archived it and you know, use the people that were there working, you know, uh, that they have under contract still, um, Seth Rollins or whoever went through there. Um, but, uh, yeah. So if anybody's going to buy it, it's good to see Tony Khan has because he'll probably do something way more uh, keeping it in, in the sense of Ring of Honor. So, yeah. Um, Which yeah. is important, Because he's a big fan of that. So, I mean, he's a fan. Sometimes being a fan can bite you in the ass when you're running a business. But at the same time, it can be really cool for wrestling fans that are watching wrestling because maybe you're going to get what you want. Although it is a select group of people. It's not uh, WWE covers. And I'm not downing AEW, Ring of Honor, or, mm -hmm. and, or, and putting over uh, WWE. I'm just saying the WWE has been established longer as a wider fan base. And, and AEW and Ring of Honor have a bubble type of fan base. Like it's a, yeah. But, but it's, not, it's growing. The shows are getting better. So... Uh, only time will tell. Only time will tell. But but it definitely, definitely exciting news in a sense. And we can see where Tony Khan's super excited about it. And um, uh, love to see where it goes. Looking forward to it. And what else is happening in the wrestling world? Uh, they got Bro Riddle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got the tag belts back and they're headed to WrestleMania. Yeah. Seth Rollins looks very upset that he's not gone. And Kevin Owens has a plan. Now, I didn't get to the end of Raw to see what Kevin Owens' plan was. But he said he was going to let me know his plan. But I didn't make it to the end of Raw before I had to get out of the house. Well, I was watching it actually last night when but I came he, in from class. But he class. stated he has a plan. Oh, he has a plan. He has a plan. Okay. Roll Rollins was brooding, but Kevin Owens had a plan. So I don't know. Hmm. I missed it. So I didn't get to the end of Raw to see that. So I, don't, I, haven't, I can't tell you what his plan was. But... Now that I think about it, I really wish I knew what his plan was. I'm yeah, about yeah. ready to turn this off here and go fast forward through Raw and see what his plan was. Well, now it's going to bother me. It's definitely going to bother me. But um, WrestleMania, uh, I, I, I did like the, uh, I did like uh, the Miz, Miz, uh, Paul, uh, uh, whatever his name is. What, 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 what do you? Plan, man. He What's his plan? It's the plan. Austin. Oh, he called out Austin. Oh, so I missed oh. it. He called out Austin. All right. Oh, ah, well, that was a big plan then. Also, he that doesn't involve Rollins, though. Yeah, he, he just dumped Rollins. He's left Seth to the side or what? Or going to bring back somebody else to make it a tag, maybe? Nah, I, well, I... So... <laughs> All right, so, so huh? Kevin Owens calls out Stone Cold, Texas Rattlesnake, in Texas. <laughs> Ooh. In Texas, it's like this coffee. You know, Stone Cold. They say he got his name because he, he was sitting there with his wife, and he went to drink his coffee. And he goes, "Damn, this coffee is Stone Cold." And then nice. Pence, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Cool <laughs> but y'all knew that though, right? You already knew that. You didn't know that? <laughs> ah, it's, it's been in everything. It's been in all the magazines. Yeah. Well, now you do. Right? Really? Now you know. He got his name from a cup of coffee. Stone Cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. I, I believe you. But um. I, I uh, the rumors were, and they were just these rumors that like 
like I don't know from insiders, different things, and you know you you can believe. Uh, what was it they taught me Malinko when I was breaking it? Believe none of none of what you hear and only half of what you see. Yep. Like so, but the rumors were that there was a match slated for Stone Cold, but then they took him off the books and just made it a confrontation. So, um, but now you're saying Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens is calling him out for a match. So it's exciting. I'm, I wish I could have stayed up and watched that. Uh, I, got, I went to bed kind of. I was really tired yesterday. I went to bed right after class. I got home, ate a chicken breast, and watched a little bit of Raw. Went, went to bed. So, so I, don't know. I was watching. Now, now you know what the plan is, though. It sounds cool. like a good plan, but everybody's now, been saying that's the plan for last month. Well, so, yeah, uh, yeah, but now yeah. Seth Rollins needs a plan. He'll figure something out. I, it, do you like? Have you have you watched? Like any of you watched Seth Rollins lately? A lot of a lot of people don't like him. I I like Seth Rollins now. I didn't like Seth Rollins before, but I like the the kind of like flying around, the swervy, the psychedelic kind of super cool Seth Rollins. Like, like, well, maybe he's being a smartass to other people, but to me, it just reminds me of uh, the Big Lebowski. Uh, but uh, if anybody's ever seen the Big Lebowski, um, no, none of you, no, no, no. Kind of what Dude Love was. Dude Love, uh, Mankind was kind of like being like uh, the Big Lebowski, but Seth Rollins. I don't know. He has like a big Lebowski feel about him, like when he's going to go fly and his hands are doodling around. That or Charlie Manson. I don't know which one. Like. So maybe the big Lebowski meets Charles Manson. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I would like to talk to him. I wonder if that is what he's going for. Like, huh. like, are you going for Charlie Manson meets the big Lebowski? Because if so, it's working. Imagine. You're you're nailing it a hundred percent. You do know who Charles going. Manson is, right? Yes, I do. Hell, and he stole. Tried to ruin the Beatles song, Hell the Skelter. So. Can't ruin it. Well, I mean, he brought some more notoriety to it. But, but that, no. Well, he went and murdered people and wrote Helter Skelter on the wall. Like, <laughs> Well, you said he ruined the song. Well, he tried to, he tainted it with his bad acts. Okay, he, he, tainted They had it, people man, cut different. a woman's baby out or something. It was horrible. Like, oh, it's old Charlie Manson. That son of a bitch was crazy. No, he should have had a match with Texas Rattlesnake in Texas. Let Stone Cold give him a fucking stunner. <laughs> but Seth Rollins, I think he he's a little bit of Charles Manson meets Dude Love. Or not Dude Love, but uh, the, the Big Lebowski, I think. Dude Love was a spinoff of the Big Lebowski, I think. These are just my opinions. But but Seth Rollins, I'm digging him right now. I like it. He had a little eye gash. He's still motoring on. Uh, that that three way tag though, uh, him Owens, uh, Master Gable and Otis the Tree Trunk, and um, uh, uh, who was uh, uh, the other team? Um, it was Orton and Bro Riddle. Yeah, they it was because uh, oh, so they won it. They won the tag belts back to go to WrestleMania. That was a tremendous. I loved it. That's why I'm sitting there back on. People say they can't hardly watch Raw, and I'm going. Is there something wrong with me because I actually like Raw? Am I like a five-year-old kid or something because I'm comprehending it and enjoying it? I mean, I like it. All the people are like, oh, you got to watch SmackDown or AEW. But I like Raw, and I like AEW, too. I, I like where they're going, although every match but one or two had blood in it. I had to pay a few. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're making, like, blood cool again, I guess. Mucho sangre, you know, a lot Look of blood. at the point where it's just like, okay, we get it, like. We got it. First, first match had blood. Second, yeah, well, and, did the first match have the Jericho? Well, no, no had the, uh, like, I don't know. I'm trying to remember. Like, I only seen the results in clips. Uh, so, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I don't know. They beat the shit out of each other. I heard. Though. I didn't see it, but I definitely. I gotta uh, figure out how to get one of those bootleg streams or something on there. But um, exciting times. Uh, WrestleMania, always exciting times. AEW coming off a great pay per view, exciting times. Buying uh, Tony Khan, pursing ROH, very exciting times. Um, yeah, I, I think it's good in wrestling right now. I, I, you know, it's a different era, different breed. It, it, not all of it's my cup of tea, but I think it's very exciting. You know, because there's there's lot, lots of cups of tea to look from. Now I just worry if ROH, there's a lot of going to be a lot of wrestling on TV. Well, the downside of things is if uh, if Tony Khan's booking ROH and AEW, will they be that much different of a company? Because mm-hmm. AEW is just big version of ROH, better and cooler. Uh, nothing, and I liked ROH. I liked ROH, but um, I don't know. You got all. It's a lot of wrestling on TV. But, yeah, that's yeah. true. But you know, if you, if you laid it on the line and you had like. Ask me who I watch, and I've said it on here many a times, and it's funny that I'm actually 
working for him now, I would like MLW because I just like their 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 mix of lucha, different things, and I really enjoy MLW. I like to see them on a uh, major channel. They are national; they're on Being TV and stuff like that. But um, but well, AEW and ROH. Well, if Tony Khan's booking, is it going to be the same booking? Is it going to be like the same? Is it going to be the same? And is, if so, is it going to be too much exposure on TV? Is what I'm wondering. I mean, maybe too many channels, he, different things all the time. If he has like a partner with him, maybe he brings somebody else, like you said, Regal into it. Well, just, no, just he's a, got a lot of people that can run things. I'm just saying, just, it, he's booking tone. So ultimately, it's like Vince McMahon. He gets the final say on everything. As you can say, yeah. Bruce Pritchard this. You can say John Laronitis that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's Vince McMahon's decision on what happens and what goes down. And at the end of the day, it's Tony Khan's too. So no matter true. what, it's going to be a reflection of Tony Khan, whatever goes down. So, yeah. All right. Enough of AEW. Uh, looking forward to WrestleMania. Uh, Madison Square Gardens, WWE. Seen a little blood there. Uh, Roman Reigns hit hit up, uh, uh, came in. Um, Brock Lesnar bounced everybody around. Boom, boom, boom. Then he grabbed Paul Heyman, was going to squeeze his head like a big crush. In the, remember, uh, you don't know Crush. Remember Crush? The Kona squeeze or whatever when he break the pineapples when he squeezed on Crush? No, he's part of Demolition for a while, too. No? All right, well, he grabbed Paul Heyman, Hyman, whatever the hell his name is, by, by his big fat head and started squeezing it. And then uh, Rome, uh, Roman Reigns came in, got him a chair behind, and then they continued, the Usos and Roman Reigns, to beat the heck out of Brock Lesnar, bloody him up, then lay him on the stairs in the ring, kind of like Brock Lesnar threw the, ring, the stairs in the ring when he won the belt and stood up like on a pedestal. Wow. Roman Reigns stood up on that pedestal with Brock Lesnar between his legs, laying there bloodied and held the belt up. And both belts up. Both belts up. So building a little steam. Uh, and uh, I guess red means green now. Everybody's bleeding. <laughs> like, yeah. Going back to it, man. But but AEW, they do it a lot. But these are like big heated things. But I think uh, WWE is probably doing it the right way. L- less is more sometimes when it's got to mean something and stuff, mm-hmm. you know. But, Absolutely. Yeah, then again, they're PG, so they can't show it on certain things. So they're showing clips. But it was really cool. And looking forward to that match and seeing how that goes. I guess Bobby Lashley's still under concussion protocol. So <laughs> whatever that means. Uh, so I, I suspect to see him pop up either That's before, during, or after that uh, that that main event in WrestleMania. So got to be somewhere. You can't just forget about it. They, they don't let you forget. They keep mentioning that in concussion protocol. So mm. if they wanted you to forget about them, they just wouldn't say it were True. And you would. Uh, so. How do you include Bobby back into it? Because you were it. I, I put that much thought into it. How would I, how would I conclude Bobby back into it if I were booking it? I haven't put that much thought into it. And I'm just sitting back as a fan mm. watching it. I want to be surprised, you know. Uh, no, I want to be surprised. Entertain mm. me. Like Robbie Williams says, let us entertain you. Like, um, you don't even know who that is, but it's just, it's a British singer. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> I hate Robbie Williams. But um, I was just telling you about him the other day. But yeah. I, no, I want to be entertained. Surprise me. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to uh, watch wrestling and guess what's coming next and this and this and that. No, I'm just saying. I don't want to. I don't want to. Is that what? Is there something wrong with that? Is there something wrong with me just wanting to watch WrestleMania and be entertained? Yeah. And, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to get home on Saturday, so I'm going to. I'm gonna see both long nights of WrestleMania, <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna see them both. I'm, I'm looking forward. I want to be surprised. Surprise me, but if I was doing it, uh, oh, I, I don't know. I, people are gonna want a clear, decisive finish, so you, you're gonna have to give them that. But I, 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 I don't know. Tri- Somehow I would turn into a triple threat. That's but, what I was gonna say. Yeah. I make a triple threat. <laughs> Uh, okay, that poem. No, I'm not, like, no, no, no federal crimes, Raymond. Um, <laughs> like, uh, I, oh, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I would shoot. You know, you gotta have a. I feel like you gotta have a clear, decisive finish, or, or people are gonna riot. But <laughs> people might riot. But They're gonna like, riot anyway. I, I, I don't know. I'd probably. I, I myself might would mess everybody and have them right and not have a decisive finish and have Bobby Lashley interfere there and uh, quite the controversy. I would definitely maybe have Bobby Lashley interfere where Ro- Roman Reigns gets it because I could believe Bobby Lashley could beat Roman Reigns before he could beat Brock Lesnar. Like in my visual mind, even though uh, 
Yeah. Because yeah, because like like because if you think about it, Brock. Well, Brock Lesnar's lost to. If you go back to his history, he's had some losses that were, to 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 uh, what visually visually just visually are lesser men, not not inside and and what they're made of or anything like yeah. that, just physical size and stuff like that. So, but I I, I think I would tend to believe that Bobby Lashley more could beat uh, Roman Reigns than he could Brock Lesnar. So then. Uh, Bobby Lashley go Roman Reigns, but then Brock. Co- I don't know. You know, it's just and plus, it, yeah, that would be two. Would that be twice? No, no, because uh, Roman Reigns screwed Brock. Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley won, right? And then yeah. boom, boom, boom. So I don't know. There's a lot of ways to look at it. You know? I'm sticking with the triple threat. I don't want to get a headache going over it. Like I said, I just want to be surprised. I don't want to. I'm not booking. I'm not getting paid to book WWE, so I'm not going to think about booking WWE or AEW or anything else. I just want to be surprised. Maybe I should just read exact results and stuff and just mind my own business here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I should yeah. mind my own business. Mm-hmm. But uh, speaking of mind my own business, it's probably about that time to get in the box, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Yep, I'd say. What's in the box? Well, it might not be that time because I'm sure there's probably some cuts and edits out of here Raymond's going to do, but we'll see. we'll see. So what's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? What's in the box? You still haven't seen Seven yet either, have you? No. What's in the box? Oh, no, no. Never mind. Man. It's, just <laughs> it's my breast. Best. My breast. My best. Brad Pitt. <laughs> Why am I thinking of breast when I mention Brad? Brad Pitt, but this is a hell of a question. Um, <sighs> Brian Danielson recently did an interview and said these kids today need to learn how to wrestle, wrestle properly. Mm-hmm. A few episodes back, you expressed your your frustrations with with the current future of the locker room. Do you think Brian Danielson is is dealing with the similar issues in in AEW locker room, and this is from Made in Canada. Oh well, uh, so so Brian Danson did an interview saying that these kids need to wrestle. So, and this person is saying that I express my opinions and my concern with similar locker rooms concerns, and wrestling. Yeah. Similar concerns, yeah. Not with the locker room itself, but like yes, wrestling. They they need. A basic foundation because um, they just I, I I don't know who's training everybody or if trainers have gotten lazy and felt like well it's changed so much I can't do nothing about it um, you know I, I can sit back and go oh they need to learn to wrestle they need to do this and they need to do that but the only thing I can do really and be positive about it is try to change it one wrestler at a time and that's why I train um, and keep continuing to uh, assist and help train young talent, young men and women, women and men, to become professional wrestlers so they can wrestle and give them a basic foundation. And I think that's probably what... He's not talking about their locker room etiquette and stuff like that because he's probably talking about their their basic wrestling skills and the fact of, of placement and where to be instead of just like starting out with a lucha spot and then a dive, you know. Um, if you watch his matches... They, they they build his him and Chris Daniels match. I watched that match on um, yeah. Dynamite the other day. That after Tony Khan made the announcement, and it just built. It built. Then it built into some like uh, bigger spots, and then uh, you know Chris Daniels does some of his like signature goes for the moon salt or something, you know. And he gets the knees up. They built up. They told a story, and then they nailed the finish. You know, like mm-hmm. um, and and I think that's what he's talking about being able to to have a foundation. That's good enough to support the heck of a story, you know, and build the story and be able to wrestle in the ring without just uh, running wide open. And I say it a lot of times when I'm explaining things, um, you know, there's been everybody's probably experienced that one morning it's their day off or they've been out too late or whatever. But yes, the long crew decides to show up at 7 a.m. outside your bedroom window, right? So not only are they outside your window at 7 a.m., but they decide to either blow or they're using some head trimmer. So it's just like this. It never stops, right? It's kind of like a match. It just gets annoying. High spot, high spot, high spot, high spot. Like right out the gate. So there's never no lows. It doesn't go away. You're just mad the whole time. So, um, 
it can be annoying like that. Uh, not that it's not an art, and that it's not they're not very talented people, but I, he's probably just talking about they have no basic foundation and um, uh, storytelling art and building into a match and building to a finish, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm sure he's feeling that in matches and stuff, but but then again, he's uh, you know. He could probably pick and choose more who he wrestles, just like CM Punk is probably pick and choose the whole MJF angle and whoever he goes on to after that. Mm -hmm. They could stick with guys that could tell a story, but that's why AEW Dynamite or whatever the show is, was like all these young guys and now the whole show, even look at the pay-per-view, it's like mostly uh, experienced guys from another company at one point. So, yeah, uh, yeah, it's frustrating, Um, scary in a sense. But I believe in cycles, and I believe everything will come back around in a cycle, and it, it'll go back to that wrestling and stuff. And um, whether uh, Brian Danielson's there or Daniel Bryan or whatever, or um, I'm here to see it, or you, I don't know. But I do believe in cycles, and uh, it'll come back around. It'll come back around in a different – still it'll, the foundations and stuff, it'll come back around. The, the, the flips and all may stay, but hopefully, hopefully – I'll get to see that cycle come back around. Okay, okay next question. How was Madison Square Garden regarded um, regarded back when you wrestled from wrestled for the WWE? It always it always a big big deal and why? And this doesn't have a name from who it's from. Okay. Madison Square Gardens was always a big deal. Um, in a business sense, it was a great payday. In our entertainment and uh, wrestler sense, the energy was crazy. You any, any given day in the garden, you could look out and, and you would see Deborah Harry from Blondie sitting in the fourth row or whatever. She had like permanent garden seats and stuff like that. Mm. Like, like, it was just cool. Great. The energy, the everything. Um uh, you, you saw that I did that, that that Brock Lesnar, uh, Roman Reigns, that whole angle was in Madison Square Gardens. It just did not. Uh, what better place than to do it at, at Madison Square Gardens? It's it's just an amazing venue. The history, just there's something magical about it. Um, <laughs> the gardens where I sp- sprayed my blood on Donald Trump, like because like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't see him in my sunglasses and recognize him, and ended up spraying the um, uh, President Trump or former President Trump with. Uh, uh, blood and stuff, and yeah, it's just you never know what's gonna happen in, or who you're gonna see in the garden. It, it's a, it, it's always great being the heart of New York City. Um, I love that city. It's a great city. The city never sleeps. The Big Apple. I mean, uh, shit, it's just awesome. I try to get. I talked to your mom about moving back to New York, and for her to move back to New York, she's like, no, no, no. Well, Goes a solid nose, people. and I'm like, man, I, I I dig New York, New York's, but um, I get it. Traffic. Cold, the cold, mostly the cold. Yeah. But I love, I love that city. It's great to visit. I can tell you that. You know, whether it's great to live in, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the cold weather myself. But mm-hmm. the garden is something magical. MSG, Madison Gardens, and now uh, it's very, 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 very. I'm very, very blessed to have wrestled there on a few occasions. So, um, yeah, that's a some banging and banging in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. How do you feel about high spots slash super risky, <laughs> super risky, high flying moves? Would you consider, would you consider that a cheap shot? And this is from Ezreal Sinner. Um. So, would I consider high flying moves a cheap shot? Cheap pop. Oh, cheap, a pop. cheap pop. Oh, cheap pop. Uh. uh um. No, I, I don't know if I consider it a cheap pop. Everything they do is uh, complicated. It takes a, a skill and a, a, it, it, it's what some people want to see. So um, I think there's room for it. I, I like them. But again, as I, as I talked about in the earlier question, you need a foundation to wrestle up. And you can still do those things like I talked about with Daniel Bryan hitting the signature moonsaults. And they ran, and, you know, our, our uh, Chris Daniels. Yeah. Um, so if you have a rest, I hate to go back to that, but if you have a if you have a foundation and you know how to wrestle, tell a story, there's tons of room for those spots and stuff like that to put them in in the right places. But when it's a 
whole match of them, and then you're just you're just like a whole match, and you're just waiting for that holy shit because you went through some tables and stuff like that. Did it? I don't know if I consider it a cheap pop, but I just think it's just a lot of wasted movements. To, you could build up to that, tell a story to that, and get three times that pop, you know, yeah. and it means something, not a wasted something. Is it cheap? I don't know. It's just wasted, wasted. Uh, but uh, no, no, no. I believe in high spots. I I, I like the, the tables and all that other stuff, but I think um, in a safe way. I'm not promoting it by no means. Am I going to do it too much? But um, I think everything can be built to that as long as you tell a story, and it's okay. So I wouldn't say it's a cheap pop. I just think a lot of wasted movements for just no reason. Got it. Yeah. And Gangrel, have you ever worked for Ring of Honor? This is from Manny underscore Coles. Yes. Uh, yes, I did. I, I worked for Ring of Honor. Uh, they brought me in. I did a uh, uh, type of a battle royal rumble type of rumble mm. thing. Not too long ago, I, I came back in. Uh, I did it. Boom. Uh, the energy was good. Felt good. It was fun to be there. Um, Everybody was super nice. Got home, then um, was called uh, uh, like three weeks later and said they're going to bring me in for uh, a group of shows um, and a couple of New Japan shows. And then um, COVID hit, things closed. But uh, I was talking to Marty Scroll, who uh, said everything was good. But then in the process of that, some stuff went down where he got caught up in some of that speak out stuff or whatever it was. So then... I never heard nothing back, so that was the last time. <laughs> so, um, so that all went out the window. But uh, I found a home, so uh, I work in an MLW now. So I'm very, uh, it's very cool. I did my first show a couple weeks ago in Charlotte, and it was fun. Um, so I'm looking forward to that adventure and seeing where that goes. You know, so mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah. So I don't know what Ring of Honor is going to do. I'm looking forward to seeing where that adventure goes too, um, with Tony Khan and AEW uh, uh, guiding the ship there. But um, really looking forward to MLW and CCW. Don't get me wrong here. Like, CCW is coming on. They got a TV now. They just announced their TV in Los Angeles and where else? Uh, I'm not sure. Los Angeles and Vegas. And what's that? Columbia. Uh, they're all over. They're going to be in Columbia. They're going to be all over the place. But I, I know in the markets there, they just announced some exciting things with CCW as well. Looking forward to that. And, uh, yeah, man. So uh, wrestling's good. My world's good. I'm happy. Banging and banging, motoring on. The rest of the world's clicking along. So excited, 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 excited to see where the future of wrestling is in about six months and then a year from now. So, and by, by the next WrestleMania, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. But um, that's it. You got anything to add to this? I don't think so. Covered, you don't think so? Covered pretty much everything. Did I? I'm sure we missed tons of stuff. I'm not sure what we missed, but I'm sure there's so much <laughs> wrestling out there. I mean, uh, Sure, he missed a lot of things, but well, all right, Raymond. Just quickly, um, if how would you compare what's going on right now with wrestling to the territories back before Vince took over? No, it's not comparable. <laughs> you can't. I mean, all right. So if you guys are missing what what I was just asked was Raymond with his own question in there. Who I think writes these other questions, but uh, he's asking <laughs> how do I compare the territories before Vince McMahon took over and like pretty much. Um, Closed them all out by hiring all the top talents to to make WWF, which is now WWE, uh, to what's going on now. I, I I don't can't compare it because territories were everybody had everybody across the spectrum of work. Like CCW is the closest thing I see coming up as a territory, like um, because they they they're working in the same towns uh, monthly and weekly. You know, some some weekly and some that mostly monthly. They're coming back and they're doing loops and circles, right? So they're, they're like the closest thing. But I don't see anything else uh, out there doing it now. They're just hitting big towns here and there. So it's the same. It's not comparable. Like a territory, if you lived in Florida, if you are in the Florida territory, you would work from Miami up to Pensacola, wherever. You just ran Florida. And, you, you know, a lot of times it was a three-month or a four-month cycle for a uh, heel coming in or a baby face. And then they would go to Louisiana territory, to Mid-Atlantic, or they'd go out... Northwest to Oregon, where they'd go up to ASW in Vancouver, you know, or, or when they finished in Vancouver, they would go through three, four months in, in Stampede, Calgary, and then they'd go down to California 
and 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 work there uh, and come back across to, to to New York, you know. So everybody was always working. You, you you didn't make a lot of money, but but you make good money, especially for back then. But it isn't the the millions that these guys are making now. But you were getting to do what you love every day, you know, five, six, seven days a week sometimes, and you still had big shows and then. Uh, they'd have a regional champion come in, like Ric Flair would come down and defend the NWA title in Florida and different places like that. He'd float in and wrestle the top guy. And uh, so they, they'd have big big matches and big match fields and stuff like that. And it was very, it was just great. It was awesome. <laughs> There's no comparing them. It's two different entities, two different monsters, two different beasts. It's just, that was that. That was just a year. Here it is where it is now. Can that come back? Can the yesteryear come back and and blend in what's now? Yes, like uh, not WWE or AEW, but like companies like CCW, maybe even MLW. You know, you just you got to pick a region, focus on that, get a TV, you know, a local TV, and build it up. Memphis was great. That Memphis, I think Memphis has probably still got TV and Channel Five Studio, and I don't know if they're running the towns every week, but uh, man, I would like to see it come back. I hope the CCW can stay organized enough to come back, and I hope there's other companies like in Georgia or Alabama or, or even the Carolinas that, that are, are working on the same goals. And I think that'd be super cool because I think there's enough room for all that because these big shows can only go into so many towns yeah, and so often. And uh, I mean, if people truly like wrestling, they're, they're going to come out once a month, wherever it is in that area, if you do a loop, you know, it, it, and they're going to come out and they're going to support it and they want to be entertained they want to see the good guy the bad guy and i believe people don't really want to be confused <laughs> like oh, what am i watching <laughs> like so there's a market for everything and uh can it come back yes on a different in a different degree in a different form but yeah i believe so and uh but it's hard to compare uh two different things there raymond that answer your question all right, that's it. That's enough episode <laughs> 40 of Fangin' a Bangin' with Gangrel and um, Ana Diaz, at ABD over there today. So, um, yeah, everybody, thank you. I mean, 40 episodes, cool, calm, like my mom, got a couple volume in my palm. Like, my mom did take volume, by the way. That was Eminem's line, D12. So, um, like, uh, uh, yeah, 40 episodes. I didn't even think I'd make four. So, here we are, 40. And um, thank you all. For listening and watching and whatever if you're on spotify or youtube and things uh go uh you know i don't say this enough but i should just if you haven't subscribed just subscribe give it a like whatnot share it with a friend and uh have a good day want some get some bad enough Take some. have a bang and a bang and day.